Leon Harris. Another reason to watch ABC 7 News. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, August 11th. In the headlines, a 12-year-old Prince William County boy goes to court to face charges. He brought guns to school. Investigators track down the cause of the widespread illness at the University of Maryland's College Park campus. And President Bush nominates a new CIA director, but Democrats question his strong political ties. From ABC 7 News, proud to be on your side. Good morning, Washington. Good morning, Washington. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Allison Starling. And I'm Horace Holmes, sitting in for Doug McKelway. We begin with traffic and weather together every 10 minutes. Here's meteorologist Brian Vandegrift. Brian? Right. Good morning, Horace. Good morning, Allison. Yesterday, the storms didn't quite make it into the region, but they will today. That front moving ever so slowly. This morning, some leftover moisture way off to the west. We'll do a quick zoom off to uh, Hampshire County in West Virginia, also uh, down through parts of Hardy County. A few showers off to the west this morning. They'll fall apart, but more will get generated later on this afternoon. Temperature-wise, out there, we've got temperatures in the 70s this morning, 70 at Dallas, 73 at Reagan, 75 in Annapolis. The forecast for this afternoon looks like this, a mix of sun and clouds becoming partly cloudy with showers and storms. Some could be strong, especially late this afternoon. Let's quick look at weather. Let's look at the roads, Lisa. Brian, I have my umbrella in tow and ready to rock and roll. And around the Beltway, right now on the dry pavement, we're doing just fine here in Springfield. Next camera close to Alexandria, to and from the Wilson Bridge. Take you next over to the Maryland side of town with a live picture of traffic heading on to the Beltway at Connecticut Avenue, where it looks good through Silver Spring. And we'll wind this journey down in Landover, Maryland. Allison Harris. Lisa, thank you very much. Topping our news right now, a 12-year-old Prince William County boy is set to go on trial this morning. He's accused of bringing guns to his Gainesville school on the last day of classes back in June. Elisa Parenti is live in Manassas this morning. She has more on what's going to happen today. Elisa, good morning. Good morning, Allison. Because the boy and his co-defendant are younger than 14, all of the proceedings here at the juvenile court in Prince William County will be closed. But police officials and school administrators are expected to testify that the boy dressed in camouflage pants, boots with a bandana over his face, and that he came to the school with the intent to kill. For more than an hour on the last day of classes at Bull Run Middle School, students crouched on the floors of darkened classrooms. Many prayed their Prince William County School wouldn't become the next Columbine. The 12-year-old boy police say stormed the 65 classroom school, goes on trial today facing charges of conspiracy to commit murder and conspiracy to commit abduction for money. Another child, one police say backed out of the plan at the last minute, is a co-defendant on weapons charges. The boy's attorney won't discuss the case, but has indicated that bullying may be at the root of what happened that morning of June 18th. Other students have said the boy was teased because of his weight, glasses, and style of clothes. The boy's mother was this week indicted on weapons charges. Police say the woman, a cafeteria worker at the school, transported the guns in her van. She didn't realize her son also had a key to the vehicle. The boy is being held at the county's juvenile detention center. Again, his trial starts this morning. Reporting live from Manassas, Elisa Parenti, ABC 7 News. Lisa, thank you so much. Later today, two brothers charged with killing a little girl are expected back in D.C. Superior Court for a preliminary hearing. 21-year-old Rashid Hall, 23-year-old Ricardo Hall are charged with the May 3rd killing of 8-year-old Chelsea Cromarty. She was gunned down by a stray bullet while watching TV in a northeast home. And 20-year-old Joshua Ross will also be in a D.C. courtroom today for a hearing. He's charged with killing 15-year-old Maisha Lowe as she sat in a parked car in Northeast last month. Prosecutors say Ross has confessed to that shooting. The last suspect in the region's serial bank robberies is now in custody. Omar Holmes was captured in Laredo, Texas. Holmes was with his father when U.S. Marshals arrested him in an office depot parking lot. Last week, Holmes was indicted on charges connected to the brazen bank robberies that have taken place in northwest Washington and Prince George's County. It's not clear yet when authorities will extradite Holmes to our region for a trial. 
A funeral will be held later today for the armored car guard gunned down last week. Family and friends will gather to remember Jason Schwindler at Singleton's funeral home in Glen Burnie. The 28-year-old died when gunmen ambushed his armored car last Friday in Hyattsville. Schwindler is survived by his wife and 13-month-old son. Police continue to look for suspects. We expect to learn later on today if the fox shot and killed by Fairfax Animal Control Officers was rabbit. That fox was killed yesterday on Grant Street in Herndon after a tried to attack an officer on Monday. A fox bit three children in the Herndon area. It's not clear if that same fox bit all three kids or if the officer shot the same fox. So officials are still asking parents to keep their children and pets inside. Well, doctors say it was the norovirus that sickened more than 100 students attending a conference at the University of Maryland yesterday. Another sick teenager was taken to the hospital. The gastrointestinal virus is rarely deadly and typically causes severe vomiting and diarrhea. When the semester begins later this month, campus should be clear of the contagious illness. Health officials aren't positive where the virus came from, but suspect a single source of transmission was the problem. We don't know whether it was a person, a source, uh, a surface or a food that may have caused this, but from that point, because of the contagiousness of this uh, infection, it often spreads. Officials say poor bathroom or kitchen hygiene could be to blame and emphasize everyone should wash their hands frequently. Later this morning, D.C. Police Chief Charles Ramsey will join American Red Cross officials in a massive appeal for blood donations as a matter of community preparedness during this heightened terror alert. Those eligible to give blood can call 1-800-GIVE-LIVE to schedule an appointment to any Red Cross donor center. Business and community groups wanting to hold blood drives are asked to call 1-800-787-9282, the extension there on your screen, 4925. 507 right now, and we're going to update your traffic and weather together in just a couple of minutes. Brian Vandegraaff, Lisa Baden, we'll both be back. Right, and later in the news, the president wants him to be the new CIA director. Coming up, we'll hear, though, what the 9-11 Commission co-chair thinks of Porter Goss. And the Wednesday edition of Good Morning Washington just getting started. We'll be right back. Stay with us, please. ABC 7 News, brought to you in part by University of Maryland, University College. Good morning, Washington. 509 on a Wednesday morning. You're looking live at 395 between Edsel Road and the Beltway there. Traffic moving just fine at this early hour. But we are going to have your traffic and weather together for you as, as we do every 10 minutes. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Let's check in with Brian Vandegrap. He's up first. Brian. All right. Good morning, Horace. Good morning, Allison. This morning we are starting off with a few clouds out there. A little bit on the warm side, a little bit on the sticky side for sure. We saw some moisture off to the west, that cold front just moving at a very slow pace and none of the real moisture making it into the region. But this afternoon we should see some showers and storms. We're starting the day in this mid 60s in Martinsburg, 68 in Frederick, 66 in Lorton, but 70s everywhere else from Culpeper to Solomons and up to Annapolis. The forecast like this, a mix of sun and clouds becoming partly cloudy late in the day. Highs in the upper 80s with a chance of some thunderstorms, a couple of which could become severe. I'll let you know about that. Also some tropical storms, but first let's check in with Lisa Baden. Well, good morning. I wanted to take everyone, first of all, to a live picture of traffic north of the Beltway. And here we are with the pace right now, making your trip in towards Springfield, Virginia, out of a Springfield through Landmark and up to the Pentagon. Looks like this, and that's not too bad. Uh, we wanted to take you next to a camera of traffic out of Newington to Springfield. Live picture now on your television set, heading north on 95. A lot of headlights, aren't there? Now, it's complicated on 66 eastbound. A car has rolled over near 234 Business on eastbound 66. It's in the median causing a distraction, traffic slowing. We're getting a lot of calls and complaints already out of Gainesville. Horace? Thank you very much, Lisa. An annual stellar spectacle is due to put on a show tonight, but we might have obstructed view seats. The Perseid meteor shower is expected to peak between midnight and dawn. It happens when the Earth passes through the tail of a comet, sending dust particles into the atmosphere, and it usually is visible with the naked eye, but forecasters are calling for partly to mostly cloudy skies overnight, so we may not get a clear look, so just blame Brian. <laughs> Take a road trip out to the country, <laughs> maybe. All right, 5-11 now. Now, looking like another warm day with some humidity and, of course, a chance of thunderstorms. When Good Morning Washington continues, controversial new comments come to light from the author of new anti-John Kerry book. Plus, your top stories updated on the quarter hour. That's next on Good Morning Washington.
watching ABC 7's Good Morning Washington with Doug McElway, Allison Starling, and meteorologist Brian Vandegraaff Weather. This is Good Morning Washington. Welcome back, everybody. 14 minutes past the hour. Let's get a look at headlines on this Wednesday morning. A 12-year-old Prince William County boy faces trial this morning. Authorities say that he brought weapons and ammunition to the Bull Run Middle School back in June. On the last day of classes, another 13-year-old accused of knowing about the scheme will be his co-defendant in this case. The boy's mother is set to go on trial in October, accused of not reporting the weapons she found in the family van. Health officials think that they've pinned down the cause of the illness on the University of Maryland campus last week. Preliminary tests show it's not food poisoning as originally thought, but instead the norovirus. Remember that? Officials are sanitizing one of the campus's dorms and reminding everyone to wash their hands regularly. Good advice. Uh, new equipment is being installed to help several Virginia post offices detect anthrax spores. Mail is processed under a hood that constantly tests the air for anthrax. If machines detect any spores at all, an alarm goes off and staff are evacuated. Maryfield and New York City are the only two cities that currently have this technology. Allison? Horace, while you slept, an explosion rocked a market north of Baghdad. It happened in Bakuba, where just two weeks ago, a suicide bomber killed at least 70 people. We don't have many details yet on this morning's attack, but a hospital official says at least six Iraqis were killed and nine more were wounded. Charlotte police have arrested a Pakistani man who they say has made a habit of videotaping skyscrapers around the country. An officer spotted the man videotaping the 60-story Bank of America headquarters and another skyscraper also in Charlotte. After arresting him, investigators found tapes of buildings and public facilities in Atlanta, New Orleans, and Texas. The suspect says he was making the tapes for family members. President Bush has nominated a Florida congressman to be the next head of the CIA. Porter Goss is a former Army intelligence officer and a former CIA agent. Some Democrats have already questioned whether a Republican would be willing to go against the president. But 9-11 Commission co-chair Thomas Kane says Goss will not play politics. Uh, he is somebody not only of integrity but of fairness. I think he's going to play this one down the middle. And uh, he will listen to what we have to say. Very much, Mr. President. Goss has served in Congress for 16 years, including eight as head of the House Intelligence Committee. President Bush heads to New Mexico and Arizona later today after wrapping up a day-long bus tour through the Florida Panhandle. Bush was joined on the bus by a former rival, Arizona Senator John McCain. The president then headed to Texas to spend the night at his ranch in Crawford. Meantime, John Kerry's presidential campaign takes him to California tonight. Yesterday in Nevada, the Democratic nominee said President Bush broke his promise on Yucca Mountain. Kerry told voters if he's elected, the nation's nuclear waste will not be sent to that Nevada mountain. The author of a new book, Ripping John Kerry, also frequently posts to a conservative website, and Jerry Corsi is apologizing for some of his comments. Corsi apparently described Muslims and Catholics as, quote, pedophiles, and called the Pope senile. And yesterday, watchdog groups filed a complaint saying a new anti-carry ad violates campaign finance laws. The complaint says it violates the federal ban on so-called soft money. Now for some other stories making news around the nation. Scott Peterson's former mistress will take the stand again today. Yesterday, Amber Fry testified that their relationship developed quickly from sex to serious. But she said she didn't know he was married and that Peterson had said that he had lost his wife. Peterson is charged with murdering his wife, who was eight months pregnant at the time. In Eagle, Colorado. The woman accusing basketball star Kobe Bryant of rape has filed a civil lawsuit against him. She is seeking at least $75,000 in compensatory damages plus undetermined punitive damages. Legal experts say this could affect the criminal case, which is set to begin later on this month. And residents on the Gulf Coast are keeping a very close eye on Tropical Storm Bonnie. It's less than 300 miles from the mouth of the Mississippi River and could make landfall sometime tomorrow, somewhere between Louisiana and Florida. Meantime, Tropical Storm Charlie is moving toward Jamaica, Brian, and it could turn and threaten the U.S. Gulf Coast as well. Why am I telling you that? Of course you know, because you've been tracking <laughs> so, the storm. But Brian, does it look as if Bonnie could strengthen? 
Uh, Bonnie could become a minimal hurricane right before landfall, but mm -hmm. not that bad. The, the, the bigger storm looks to be Charlie. Charlie. Charlie's the one we have to worry yeah, about. He's coming our way, possibly. Uh, possibly. The pass taking anywhere from the Gulf, right into the Gulf, into the, you know, the panhandle of uh, Florida, mm -hmm. or bring it back across Florida and up the eastern seaboard. Mm -hmm. So something to watch and keep an eye on. And I'll just show you this seven-day forecast coming up. You'll have to pay attention because the weekend right now I'm going to keep dry, but if Bonnie takes a little bit extra time, Saturday can be wet, and if Charlie gets here early, Sunday could be wet or the weekend could be perfect. So we're gonna lay it all out for you. Here's the satellite radar picture. The moisture from yesterday, we watched the frontal system approach and we were a little concerned yesterday about some weather making its way into here. We did have a watch box that was issued, but that was mainly to the north and west of the town and none of the moisture actually pushed into the metro region, way off to the west. And this morning we're left with a few showers over in parts of West Virginia. Temperatures this morning in the 60s, 65 in Martinsburg, 66 in Lorton, everyone else the 70s, 70 at Dulles, 72 at Reagan, 73 in Solomon, 74 in Annapolis as we get things started. A little closer to home, Quantico 73, Gaithersburg checking in at 66. And the forecast, the bigger picture, shows here the little bit of moisture, but the frontal system will get kicked up. That sticky flow ahead of it will get our atmosphere charged for what could be a strong storm or two later on this afternoon. There's Charlie, well-defined, and here's Bonnie, does, not as well-defined, but still Bonnie, the one we're keeping our eyes on. Here's the path of Bonnie uh, moving to the north uh, right now, about five miles per hour, very slow mover, but looks like if she keeps this path, her moisture could be over top of us come Friday, making our Friday a pretty wet and damp day. So we'll have to keep an eye on it. We'll watch. Mm -hmm. It's interesting oh, watch. where you know where these storms will end up taking us, particularly. Yes. All right, Brian. Thank I you. I know where we're going right now. Where? Lisa Baden. It's my turn. It's my <laughs> turn. <laughs> I appreciate that, Horace. I wanted to run on over to 66, and I'm running a lot faster than the traffic out of Gainesville to Manassas. Car had rolled over at 234 Business. Everything now confined to the shoulder. Hey, your lanes are open, but we still have unhappy campers heading around the scene. Very happy in Montgomery. County and along 270, even the Dulles Greenway and the Dulles Toll Road good to the Beltway once you get there. In and out of Baltimore, nothing complicated on 95. Looks good out of Laurel, heading south on the Baltimore-Washington Parkway as well. Wanted to see if we could get a live picture of the traffic right now on the Beltway in Landover. Ah, no problems here. That's good. Allison Horace, back to you. That is good, Lisa. Thank you. Lisa, thanks. It's 72 degrees outside at 521, and business news is still ahead here on Good Morning Washington. Up next, the Redskins look to move forward after a season-ending injury to the team's longest tenured player. We'll talk sports when we come back. Did you know that that's 210 there? That's 210. It's moving very smoothly at 524. I'm sorry, it's 95 at 210. That's not 210 itself. <laughs> that's technically 95. We're close. I err. But I corrected it. It's 524 right now, and you're taking a good live look at that, which is 95. Keep it here for your traffic and weather together every 10 minutes right now. Time for sports. Here's Tim Brandt. Hey, good morning, Washington. Let's start with the Redskins this morning. I spoke with John Jansen last night about his ruptured Achilles tendon. John told me he's headed to Charlotte today for surgery to repair the injury. He will be operated on by the same specialist who operated on Patrick Ramsey's foot. John expects to be out and off his left leg for several months, then rehab, and hopefully be ready in time for minicamp in the spring. John is frustrated, disappointed, and so is his teammate, Sean Springs. That hurts because he was a, um, he's an anchor on the offensive line. He's a great player, um, brings a lot of leadership, and we're going to miss him. The USA basketball team won its final tune-up before the Olympics in a rematch with Turkey. The Americans ignored pregame car bombings near their hotel and a pretty hostile crowd in Istanbul. To break it open in the fourth quarter, they win it 80-68. to The summer games officially open in Athens on Friday. And there's a look at your morning sports. Usually an increase in interest rates sends stocks down, but with investors looking for signs of a strengthening economy, a vote of confidence from the Fed was just what they needed. Linda Bell joins us now live from New York with this morning's business headlines. Good morning, Linda. Good morning, Allison. You're exactly right. Wall Street coming off its... Of, 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 off of its, excuse me, biggest gains in two months. After the Fed did the expected and raised interest rates by a quarter point, the central bank also saying that economic growth is poised to accelerate and reiterated a plan to raise rates at a measured pace to contain inflation. That was yesterday, but today we do have futures markets lower as concerns about the growth in the computer-related industry take center stage. We have Cisco Systems, the world's largest maker of networking gear, saying business customers were becoming a little more cautious about the economy. Now, these comments come even after 
after Cisco Systems fourth quarter profit rose to a record. Meanwhile, mobile phone and laptop chip maker National Semiconductor cut its first quarter sales forecast on reduced inventories and weak sales. And that is your latest in business news. Reporting live in New York City, I'm Linda Bell, Bloomberg News for ABC 7 News. Back over to you. Linda, thank you much. Uh, it's 527 right now. And uh, looking like a typical summer day, warm temperatures, little humidity, chance of thunderstorms later on today. Well, we will get an update on the forecast up next. That's when we check our traffic and weather together. And we've got our news headlines. Also, a 12-year-old Prince William County boy heads to court, accused of bringing guns to school. Plus this story from our Sarah Lee. Good morning, guys. We're live on the campus of the University of Maryland, where health officials say they know what sickened more than 100 teenagers earlier this week. I'll have that story straight ahead. We'll see you in just a minute, Sarah. Thank you. And thanks for starting your morning with us here in Roslyn and all over the Washington area. You're watching Good Morning Washington. Hi, this is Ed Smith at the National Zoo's Amazonia exhibit, where we feature big fish. These aeropame are six feet long, started out as six inches about 10 years ago. One of the world's largest freshwater fishes get to be even twice this length. Good morning, Washington. Good morning, Washington. It's 5.30 on a Wednesday morning. It's August 11th. I'm Allison Starling. And I'm Horace Holmes. Thanks for being with us. We begin with your traffic weather together every 10 minutes. Here's meteorologist Brian Vandegraaff. All right, good morning. It's going to be another sticky day. Yesterday, the storms quite uh, didn't quite make it to the metro area, but this afternoon, a different story. The front is approaching, and we will see a partly cloudy afternoon, muggy and warm. Highs still in the upper 80s, just like yesterday, with some late-day storms. Some of those storms could become severe. We'll keep you posted on that. Tomorrow and Friday look to be fairly cloudy and better chances for showers, especially tomorrow with the frontal system, Friday with the remnants of Bonnie a possibility, and then Charlie most likely on Monday. But if Bonnie hangs up late and Charlie comes early, we could have rain on the weekend, so that's something we need to think about. Something else we need to think about is what route to take to work, Lisa Baden. That's true. Well, I'd say 66 is now a better route for you this morning. You see there was a car that had rolled over near 234 Business. That's now on the shoulder, and all the activity is just slowing the traffic out of Gainesville into Manassas. 95, notice I've given you the green light this morning. No accidents ahead of you leaving the uh, Quiet Harbor area, making your trip up to the river, and then beyond this, the Beltway. Notice the pace of traffic. It's steady, but notice the volume, too. Now, if you're going to and from the Wilson Bridge, I don't have any accidents to report right now. Heading through Southern Maryland looks good out of Brandywine and even out of Annapolis on Route 50 to New York Avenue. One more camera is going to take us live to a picture of traffic in Silver Spring, Maryland, Beltway at Connecticut Avenue. Horace. Okay, Lisa, thank you so much. Later today, a 12-year-old Prince William County boy goes to court to face charges that he brought guns to school. The incident created a state of panic and triggered an evacuation of Bull Run Middle School back in June. Our Elisa Parenti is live in Manassas right now with a preview of the day ahead for that. Hi. Good morning, Horace. Because the boy and his co-defendant are younger than 14, the proceedings here at juvenile court in Prince William County will be closed. But we understand that officers from the police department as well as school administrators will be testifying that the boy came dressed in camouflage pants with a bandana across his face and intended to kill. For more than an hour on the last day of classes at Bull Run Middle School, students crouched on the floors of darkened classrooms. Many prayed their Prince William County School wouldn't become the next Columbine. All of a sudden they told us to start running down the hill and then we were all scared and then I heard the teachers talking about there was a gun. The 12-year-old boy police say stormed the 65 classroom school, goes on trial today facing charges of conspiracy to commit murder and conspiracy to commit abduction for money. Another child, one police say backed out of the plan at the last minute, is a co-defendant on weapons charges. The boy's attorney won't discuss the case, but has indicated that bullying may be at the root of what happened that morning of June 18th. Other students have said the boy was teased because of his weight, glasses, and style of clothes. They'd call him, like, big, like, fat and stuff. The boy's mother was this week indicted on weapons charges. Police say the woman, a cafeteria worker at the school, transported the guns in her van. She didn't realize her son also had a key to the vehicle. 
The boy is being held currently at the juvenile detention center. Again, his trial gets underway in just a few hours. Reporting live from Manassas, Elisa Parenti, ABC 7 News. Elisa, thank you so much. Well, later today, there will also be a hearing for the man accused of killing 15-year-old Maisha Lowe. 20-year-old Joshua Ross is charged with first-degree murder. Prosecutors say Ross admitted to that shooting. Maisha was shot and killed last month while sitting in a parked car in Northeast. Police believe one of the other girls in the car or the person who normally drives that car was the intended target. The last suspect in the region's serial bank robberies is now in custody. Omar Holmes was captured in Laredo, Texas. U.S. Marshals arrested Holmes yesterday as he sat in a car with his father. Last week, Holmes was indicted on charges connected to the bank robberies in the district and Prince George's County. It's unclear, though, when he will be brought back to this area for trial. Meantime, two other suspects in those robberies will be arraigned today in court. Well, we should know sometime today if a fox shot and killed by Fairfax County County Animal Control Officers was rabbit. The fox was killed yesterday on Grant Street in Herndon after it was spotted behaving strangely by an officer. Three children in the Herndon area were bitten by a fox on Monday. It is not known if the same fox that was killed is the one that attacked the children. Fox is now being tested for rabies. We have new information about the illness that struck those high school students attending a conference at the University of Maryland. Doctors say it was the norovirus that sickened more than 100 students. Sarah Lee is live at College Park at the campus there with more details for us. Sarah, good morning. Good morning, Allison. Uh, the norovirus is the outbreak that we often hear about on cruise ships. And while it's not life-threatening, it is extremely contagious. So today, La Plata Hall, the dormitory where the six students were staying, remains closed for decontamination. Was it through the dining hall, or La Plata, the residence hall, that some sort of illness sickened more than 100 students and five adults this week at the University of Maryland? Health officials are still unclear. We don't know whether it was a person, a source, uh, a surface, or food that may have caused this. But preliminary test results do confirm the culprit is the highly contagious norovirus, a virus that affects the stomach and intestines, leading to nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. And that was the case for the teenagers attending a two-week conference here on campus. Health officials say noroviruses are found in the stool or vomit of infected people and can spread through eating food or touching surfaces that have become tainted. While the exact source is still unknown, the university is taking measures to disinfect La Plata Hall from top to bottom before regular students arrive later this month. I hope it doesn't spread to the rest of the campus and I hope it's taken care of by the beginning of fall semester. I think it would be though, I hope. Well, I gotta wonder where it came from. Um and what preventative measures they could have been taken that weren't. Food service workers who handle the students' food are also being tested. They hope to have final results by the end of the week. Live at the University of Maryland in College Park, Sarah Lee, ABC 7 News. Sarah, thanks. 536 right now. And changes are being made, and officials are tightening up security checkpoints after a gap in the system was uncovered. Yesterday, ABC 7 found a way to get to the Hart Senate office building without having to go through a checkpoint. Several motorists knew how to avoid that checkpoint by turning off Maryland Avenue onto Justice Court. It doesn't make no sense. <coughs> I mean, it inconvenience you this way, so if you know better, you go this way. We don't claim to be a perfect department. Um, it was just an oversight, um, but once it was brought to our attention, we adjusted. The Short time after we alerted police of the whole, a officer was stationed at the intersection of Justice and 2nd Avenue. Meantime, new equipment is being installed to help keep customers and employees at several Virginia post offices safe. If the mach machines find any anthrax spores, an alarm goes off and employees can be evacuated. Yesterday, officials in Richmond announced the installment of the biohazard detection systems. The Merrifield Postal Distribution Center is already equipped with this technology. Well, it looks like for us a fantastic meteor shower is still up in the air. The Perseid meteor shower is expected to peak between midnight and dawn tonight or tomorrow morning depending on how you look at it but with partly or mostly cloudy skies around our region we may be out of luck the event happens when the earth passes through the tail of a comet sending dust particles into the atmosphere
I bet that's a sight to see. Yeah. 537, 72 degrees outside and still ahead on Good Morning Washington. We'll find out if a hot and humid afternoon will give way to some thunderstorms. We're going to see Brian Vandegraaff. He'll be back in just a minute with his forecast. Also ahead, should parental supervision be required for a summer nudist camp for children? New details on that coming up. And a famous newsman slips out to pick up some food and instead he finds himself in police custody. We'll tell you what happens next. All those stories plus Lisa Baden is back back with your update on your Wednesday morning commute. Good morning, Washington. We'll come right back. You can buy this stool at a fancy schmancy furniture store. They call it an ottoman and it costs 499 bucks. I call that crazy. You see, for the same price, you can afford a whole lot more at Room Store. Like this. We call it a sofa. You can buy it at Room Store for just $4.99. I call that smart. Very smart. We put it all together to save you more room store. Insurance companies and their lawyers will look out for the negligent driver, but you need someone to look out for you. Call Signs, Kirk, and Miles at 1-800-LAWYERS. Let's talk about it. Because if you have a phone, you have a lawyer. If you suspect an injury caused by medical negligence, call 1-800-MALPRACTICE. Birth injury, 1-800-MALPRACTICE. Cancer misdiagnosis, 1-800-MALPRACTICE. Nursing home negligence, 1-800-MALPRACTICE. The school year will soon be upon us. But it's not here yet. Before summer ends, make sure you get in a day of fun at Six Flags America. And now's a great time to go with our Still Time for Playtime offer. Save up to 50% on admission with coupons from Safeway. Before you get on this bus, get on this bus. So get to Safeway today. Six Flags America. It's playtime. Philadelphia. So rich. So creamy. So luscious. It makes an ordinary bagel. Mmm, divine. And it's 25% less saturated fat than butter. When it's Philly, it's heaven. And for a deliciously smooth spread, try Philadelphia Whipped. A tasty spin on the Philly you love. The time is coming. There's no escape from the day you retire. And will you be ready financially? Are you ready, dear? You still can be with investments like an IRA or a retirement plan at work. It's never too late. But start now, because if you wait... You're making a grave mistake. You may wind up working forever. <laughs> Saving for your financial future doesn't have to be a nightmare. Choose to save. That's us. Almost. There we are. Hey. 19 minutes before the hour. This is in a beautiful building. <laughs> right in the center of Roslyn, Virginia. Wilson well, Boulevard. It it's is. the world headquarters of ABC7. Let's, good morning, everybody. Yes, good morning, everybody. Let's get right to traffic and weather together as folks head out to start their Wednesday today. Brian, Mild how's it look? this morning. A little bit on the yeah. sticky side. Thunderstorm's a better bet today. Most of them didn't make it here yesterday, but today the front is closer. So storm's a good bet late today. Mm -hmm. And then it gets kind of muddled for the end of the week. And the weekend also a question as we look to Tropical Storm Bonnie and Tropical Storm Charlie. Take a look at the temperature outside right now. It is 72 with a wind out of the south, southwest at night. The pressure on the rise, humidity at 79%. It is sticky out there this morning. Here's the satellite radar picture, and we'll show you that front that's off to the west moving so slowly. Uh, we watch boxes posted yesterday for parts of Pennsylvania and just off to the west. We thought the moisture would make its way here, but it did not. But tonight, a better chance, especially late this afternoon into the evening, as that front is getting closer. We still have that humid flow and good deal of instability with the daytime heating out there and the sunshine. So here's Charlie, more impressive than Bonnie that's right here in the middle of the Gulf Coast, but Bonnie will be the one that'll make landfall first. And here are some projected paths of some storms we'll keep an eye on. Bonnie right now, tropical storm with max winds at 46 miles per hour, gusting up to 58 miles per hour, heading to the north at about five, but the track is supposed to turn to the northeast later on today, about 265 miles south-southwest of the mouth of the Mississippi. If you follow her path, Sometime at Friday early, she'd be in the Carolinas. So during the day, Friday would be making the remnants of Bonnie would be making her way across our area. 
That's why we think a good deal of uh, clouds and showers for us on Friday. Now, the second storm, Charlie, will pay attention to. That brings it across Florida and then somewhere up the eastern seaboard. That could bring showers to us late Sunday into Monday. But right now, it's still early. still too hard to tell exactly. But right now, the weekend, I'm going to keep dry in the seven-day. But there could be some rain on either end of that weekend from Bonnie and or Charlie. So PM thunderstorms today looks like a good bet. The forecast and tail looks like this with a mix of sun and clouds. And then those thunderstorm chances beginning in the mountains midday and then pushing eastward towards the bay by late afternoon or early evening. 87 sticky degrees. And your seven-day forecast shows a wet Thursday and Friday, cooler with the front and then Bonnie, then a respite for the weekend before Charlie. But we reserve the right to put some rain in the weekend because these storms are not predictable mm -hmm. exactly. I mean, they could shift a little bit either way. Okay. All right, Brian. Thank you. You're staying on top of it. I'm trying to. Okay. All right. Let's get out to Lisa now with the latest trouble spots, Lisa. Well, yeah, that's true. And I'm thinking traffic's not predictable either. I'll tell you what's happening now, and that's not much. And we're very happy about that. You have a time to make that peanut butter and jelly sandwich and take it with you this morning. If you're heading out onto 270, the Dulles Greenway, Route 7 even looks good out of Sterling to Tyson's and onto the Beltway. Wanted to show you a live picture right now of the 270 traffic heading past Democracy Boulevard. See the headlights? They're on their way toward the American Legion Bridge. Now we're going to go to the other side of town because northbound on Branch Avenue there's a car on fire at Allentown Road. Authorities on the scene everything is under control and I understand delays begin at Coventry Way. You can get by but it's a distraction on Branch Avenue toward the Beltway. Allison? Checking our top stories at 544 the last suspect in the region's serial bank robberies is now in custody. Omar Holmes was captured yesterday in Laredo, Texas. U.S. Marshals arrested Holmes without incident as he sat in a car with his father. No word yet on when he could be brought back to our area for trial. Metro officials are reviewing security after two Metro bus drivers were attacked by riders in recent days. Last Friday, a female driver was sexually assaulted in Centerville. And yesterday in Northeast D.C., a driver was punched in the face by a man who refused to pay his fare. A man accused of making a bomb a bomb threat, rather, that closed part of the metro system last year is pleading guilty. 26-year-old Jason Lewis Foster faces up to 10 years in prison. Last December, a bomb threat stopped service on the orange and blue metro lines, leaving some passengers stranded for hours. A blow to several people who say they were sexually abused as children by Roman Catholic nuns. They wanted 30 minutes to address a national gathering of sisters in Texas, but the Silver Spring-based Leadership Conference of Women Religious turned down that request. The group did offer to have four of its senior officials meet with the victims. A federal judge has tossed out a lawsuit challenging a new Virginia law requiring parental supervision at a summer nudist camp for children. The law pertained to the camp in Whitetail Park in southeastern Virginia. The ACLU argued the law violated privacy rights. Well, the judge says the lawsuit is moot since camp organizers surrendered their permit to operate this summer. The judge added the law does not violate violate a parent's right to raise their children as they choose. 546 in time is running out for a big winner. If you bought a lottery ticket in Loudoun County, you might want to check your pockets. The winning Mega Millions ticket worth $175,000 was purchased at the one-stop market in Luckett's on February 13th, way back then. The winning numbers were 14, 30, 42, 43, and 45. 14, 30, 42, 43, and 45. The winner has until the close of business tonight to come forward before the ticket expires. Probably it's sitting in their drawer or it accidentally got thrown away. Giving up $175,000? I think they're crazy. $75,000 is worth a check. But even if no one claims the ticket, there will still be a winner in all of this. Schools. All the money will go into a fund to build new schools. Time now on a Wednesday morning to check some top national stories. And we go now to ABC's Tamala Edwards up in New York. Good morning. Here are the headlines from ABC News. President Bush's choice to head up the CIA has given up his role as chairman of the House Intelligence Committee to prepare for the confirmation process. Tense hearings are expected for Florida Congressman Porter Goss, a former CIA agent. Those who oppose his nomination say he's too partisan. A Pakistani man in the U.S. illegally is being held while officials investigate why he's been videotaping key areas of six southern cities. Kamran Akhtar was caught with tapes of skyscrapers, government buildings, and mass transit systems. He was arrested in Charlotte, North Carolina by an officer who spotted him taping the, taping the Bank of America headquarters. 
<laughs> his statements were all over the place. Uh, from taking video from his, for his brother to just visiting around. Uh, there's just so many things he said. There'll be more on this case on Good Morning America after your local news. In Iraq, at least six people were killed today by a bomb blast in a market north of Baghdad. Meanwhile, fighting between U.S.-led forces and a Shiite militia in the city of Najaf has entered a seventh day. An Iraqi politician is calling for Iraqi forces to deal with the militia without U.S. help. Now here are some of the events making news in the day ahead. The leaders of the 9-11 Commission appear before the House Intelligence Committee. Kindergarten teachers and law enforcement officials release a report which says better funding for pre-K programs would help reduce crime in the long run. Doctors and drug enforcement officials launch a campaign to answer questions about pain medication and how to avoid its abuse. And it is prime viewing for the annual Perseid meteor shower, which peaks tonight. And that's some of what ABC News is following at this hour. I'm Tamala Edwards. And still ahead, why a veteran newsman spent more than 60 minutes trying to sort things out in police custody. Interesting story. Plus, we'll be back. We'll update your traffic and weather together. You are watching Good Morning Washington. Today's top stories brought to you by Allegra. Coffee break, Pollen. Yeah, Ragweed, by this time her Benadryl allergy and his Tylenol severe allergy already stopped working. Her Allegra 180 hasn't stopped. It lasts four times longer. One dose of most seasonal allergy medicines doesn't work as long as you want, but just one Allegra 180 lasts up to four times longer than most OTC allergy medicines. Allegra 180 works around the clock. For people 12 and over, side effects alone may include headache, cold, or backache. The L's in Allegra must stand for long lasting. Long lasting Allegra. The relief goes on. Who's ready to do great things? You bought me a computer? Thank you, thank you, thank you. So totally rock. You bought her a computer? <gasps> thank you, thank you, thank you. You so totally rock. Woo! Right now, get this student-configured HP Pavilion with Intel Pentium 4 processor available only at Office Depot for just $499.99 with no interest and no payments for six months. I'm so set for school. I'm 47. When you look 10 years younger, you're proud to admit your age. Rock introduces retinol correction. On average, your skin will appear up to 10 years younger. I'm 43. Why? Retinol correction, exclusively at drugstores. Looking for a hotel that the kids will enjoy too? Send in the experts. When you use Hotels.com, it's like sending in a team of experts to check out everything you need to know about hotels. So log on or call our certified hotel agents 24-7 to help you find the perfect hotel at the perfect price. Like Orlando from just $45.95. Hotels.com. Best prices, best places, guaranteed. There's nothing like the simple pleasures of life. So we took one of those pleasures and made it simpler. Smucker's Uncrustables. All the goodness of a PB&J without the crust. With a name like Smucker's, it has to be good. Looking for home furnishings of exceptional value and quality? Then you must come to Gallahan's August Anniversary Sale. Now through Labor Day, celebrate with savings of up to 15% off our already discounted prices from America's top fine furniture manufacturers. Plus, save an extra 15% on all accessories. From traditional to transitional, Gallahan's is your complete home furnishings destination. Take I-95 South to Fredericksburg, Virginia. Come for the selection, buy for the discounts. I'm Johnny Cochran. If you've been seriously injured in an accident, the lawyers at our firm may be able to help you. We will do everything in our power to represent your interests. That's why we have lawyers with experience in the courtroom. Remember, insurance companies know which law firms can best handle cases. We're proud of our experience and results. Please feel free to call us. You only have one day in court. Make it count. The Cochran Firm, Washington, D.C., America's law firm. Good morning, Washington. It's 5.52 on Wednesday morning. Time for your traffic and weather together every 10 minutes. And you know, somebody's mm -hmm. stopping traffic right now <laughs> in front of our studio. I'm not going to touch that one. <laughs> Brian Vandegraaff is outside. 
Hey, good morning, Horace. Good morning, Allison. Yes, I'm outside because it's just so mild out here with temperatures in the 70s. And as we head through the afternoon, we're looking for a sticky day with showers and thunderstorms, a good bet, especially as we head through afternoon. Take a look at the maps and we'll show you what's going on outside. We've got uh, some satellite radar shots for you right now. A few showers to the west. We'll push this forward and show you that uh, we kept the showers pretty much off to the west and eventually they will start to creep up, especially in our area later on today. Moving the map along, we will show you that temperatures outside are in the 80s, not 80s, upper 70s rather, across the region. And as we head through the afternoon, we'll see a mix of sun and clouds, chance of thunderstorms, and high about 87 degrees. Quick look at weather, let's check on traffic. Good morning, Lisa Baden. Right now, I wanted to take everyone on over to the Wilson Bridge. Traffic and the headlights in this camera heading out of Alexandria. And that looks like a pretty good run right now out of Oxon Hill as well on the right side, leaving Maryland. Let's go over to our Alexandria camera of traffic closer to Telegraph Road and near Eisenhower Avenue. More of it, too, isn't there? And 395 right now is between Duke Street and Seminary Road in this camera. By the way, if you decide to take the rails, Metro Rail, Virginia Railway Express, or Mark Rail, everyone reports in on time. Allison Horace. Lisa, thank you very much. Six minutes before the hour. A news veteran is back at home this morning after spending part of the night in handcuffs. Mike Wallace of 60 Minutes just picked up some takeout dinner up in New York when his driver was stopped by taxi and limousine commission officers for double parking. Now, when the inspectors tried to see if there were any other violations, they say that Wallace became confrontational. They threw him in cuffs. They had, uh, there were all these policemen and, and I mean, it was unbelievable. It was, it was really appalling. He didn't do anything. Police officers reportedly didn't know they were arresting a celebrity and say they were only doing their job. Wallace was issued a summons for disorderly conduct before being released. Mm. Time now is 5.54. Good morning, Washington's going to take a short break, but continues right after this. When you're ready to buy a new car, it helps to have someone on your side, which is why you should come to Fairfax Honda this week. Building this new showroom and service center made us big. No, giant. And being named number one in the Mid-Atlantic region by Honda Motors made us bigger yet. No, giant. So choose from this gigantic selection while paying thousands less at Fairfax Honda. The Honda Giant. On Route 50, just one mile east of Fair Oaks Mall in the heart of Fairfax. Fairfax Honda, the Honda Giant. Who knows what you can accomplish in the time you save by calling Empire today for your new carpet and flooring. You'll choose from a great selection of carpet, laminate, and hardwood right at home. And we install next day. Right now, you'll save 50%, plus no payments till 2006. Order now and get two two-for-one coupons to any participating Six Flags theme park. Come on, it's playtime. Call Empire today. 800-588-2300-Empire. Today. These days, technology is everywhere, and it can be overwhelming. But don't worry, the Community Colleges of Maryland can help. With 16 colleges all over the state, you can improve job skills, earn certifications, or pursue a degree. To learn more about basic and advanced IT classes and schedules to fit your life, visit our website. The Community Colleges of Maryland. Where you need us, when you need us. Want more? Get more. Just get going to the Dodge Summer Sales Drive, where you'll have to hurry if you're going to grab the all-new Hemi-powered Dodge Durango and get $1,000 bonus cash for a combined cash allowance of $5,000. But you've got to get it in gear, because these offers end August 31st. Want more? Get going. See your Dodge dealer today, because summer's almost gone, and so is the Summer Sales Drive. It's back. The incredible three-day sale at Value City Furniture. Right now, save about half on this two-piece decorator living room in soft navy chenille. Now just $6.99 for the sofa and love seat. Pay only $9.99 for this stunning six-piece all-wood bedroom. Save half on the dresser, mirror, queen headboard, footboard, wood rails, and slats, and the nightstand. Plus, buy with no money down, no interest, and no payments until 2005. Don't miss the incredible three-day sale through Sunday at Value City Furniture. You just can't do any better. 
Welcome back, everybody. Three minutes before the hour. If you like the music of the Beach Boys, head to Broadway. More than 30 of the group's songs will be featured in the musical Good Vibrations. It's all about small-town teenagers who travel to California. Fun, fun, fun. Help me, Rhonda, California Girls, all the big hits are expected in the show. Sounds fun. Yeah. So a lot more expected right here in the second hour of Good Morning Washington. Coming up, a mysterious occurrence in the Chesapeake Bay has environmentalists scratching their heads this morning. And new details on the finalists vying for the job to lead the district schools. And how about this? Putting your own face, or anyone else's for that matter, on a postage stamp. Look at that. Good Morning Washington. We'll be right back. Thanks for helping make Good Morning Washington the fastest growing early morning newscast in the Washington area. Hello everyone, I'm Terry Bradshaw and hello all you Washington Redskins fan and Good Morning Washington. I say too. Good morning, Washington. Six o'clock on this Wednesday, August the 11th. I'm Horace Holmes in for Doug McElroy. Good morning, Washington. I'm Allison Starling. Time for traffic and weather together. Every 10 minutes, we sent meteorologist Brian Vandegraaff outside our studios in Roslyn this morning to tell us exactly how the weather's looking with the first-hand look at it. Hey, Brian. Hey, good morning. Ed. It's a little bit on the mild side this morning. You definitely can feel the humidity in the air. And as we head through the afternoon, a good chance of some showers and thunderstorms. That'll be what we're talking about. Let's look at temperatures across the region right now and temperatures range from the 60s upper 60s in some locations to 70s we've got 72 in Fredericksburg 70 in Dallas 74 in Annapolis and 68 in Frederick we'll click the map forward and show you the forecast then in detail for this afternoon we're calling for a mix of sun and clouds muggy and warm with some late day storms some of those storms could be strong when we come back we'll talk about two tropical storms and their effects on us here in the metro region but now let's get a look at the roads with Lisa Baden good morning Lisa well, thanks a lot, Brian. I wanted to first of all take everyone over into Virginia because the bugaboo has been 66. Very slow eastbound out of Haymarket into Manassas. Once you get to 234 business, it will improve. Earlier accident in that area is what caused this mess. Here we are live, northbound on 95. Notice the traffic and the flow of it out of a Springfield, but also notice the volume. Hmm, plenty of it, too. Right now, I don't have any accidents to report. If you're going to make your trip on over to uh, Route 5, Branch Avenue. Now, earlier we had a car fire close to Allentown Road. That is now resolved. No delays on northbound Route 5 any longer through Clinton and out of Camp Springs. Let's go live to a picture of traffic on the Beltway in Landover. Allison. Later today, a 12-year-old Prince William County boy goes to court to face charges he brought guns to school. The incident created a state of panic and triggered an evacuation of Bull Run Middle School back in June. Our Elisa Parenti is live in Manassas now with a preview of the day ahead. Elisa. Allison, because the boy and his co-defendant are younger than 14, the proceedings here at juvenile court in Prince William County will be closed to the public. But school officials and police officers are expected.